I'm Mary Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing the Big Tom Turkey for Thanksgiving and this guy's a real fun um, little table decoration for Thanksgiving so we're going to work on him. And I used just an inexpensive 99 cent foam pumpkin that I picked up from Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store whatever. You could even do one of the bigger pumpkins and they go on sale especially after Halloween so you'd have it for Thanksgiving so don't be afraid to even make it bigger and take it to the next level. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the styrofoam and we want to think about where it would sit because we're actually going to set it onto a wood base so we want to think about where it would sit. If we took one off kind of angled it, it wouldn't give it as much room. So we're going to kind of come in and hit two of these different layers there. And I'm going to take a bread knife, which works really, really well. And I'm going to look up above it where it would hit there and there and try to get this as even as possible. Easier said than done. And let's take a look at this and get rid of this and all the little white stuff as fast as you can because they end up back in your clay or your quick wood. Let's take a look at this and make sure that it's not leaning too forward. And it is leaning a little bit forward. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit off the back. This is where the mess starts. It's not so bad if you start doing something like that. Alright, let's take another look at it. Don't worry about it being perfect down here. And that is better. So we're going to leave it just like that. Now, for our head, we need a gourd with a crook neck. So you want one that kind of curves around that you can use to stick in and we're actually going to use the stem part of the pumpkin and this guy's real curvy so we may have to even break him a little bit more because you kind of want his head sticking up out about that level so I have one over here and I accidentally broke him but that's okay because his head's going to go inside that hole anyway and I base coated him with a barn red kind of a real deep red color. And we're going to put this hole in here next. And we're just going to make room for that. And I'm actually just going to stuff that in and it'll reach on the other side. That's how we get that hole nice and big. We can fit our board in there. The first time I did this, I kind of cut this area off. And then you have the unevenness. Let's see if it's big enough yet. Of the foam and everything. So I'm just going to keep making it bigger here. And then we're going to just have this big enough we can squish that guy in there and that'll go in. I don't want to push him all the way in yet till I get his face on because we've got a couple more things to do with him other than trying to catch all this plastic stuff like I was talking about. So now that we've got the hole in him, let's take him and let's sponge him. And using our wet sea sponge, we're going to sponge dark brown onto our pumpkin. Now on this guy, I actually put a one coat of light medium brown over him to give him a darker look, if you like the darker look. But I am just going to sponge this fairly well. And on this area, I'm probably even going to do it heavier. And you don't want a lot of space in between. Sponge our pumpkin, get nice and textured. All right, 
right, so we've got him all sponged, nice and even. Okay, so we're gonna set him down and let him dry. And we're gonna put our face on. I'm trying to get some more of this little foam stuff corral so it doesn't end up on my quick wood. We're gonna put our face on our little turkey. So you probably need two coats of your acrylic paint on here. And take your jewelry off because we're working with quick wood. And we're just going to cut a sliver here of the quick wood. And I'm going to put some vegetable spray. And if you haven't watched my video on quick wood, I really suggest that there's a lot of fun things in it and a lot of ways to show you how to use it. But to activate it, we're going to need, need it to activate it. Now you got to think about how this guy is sitting. So his face is coming down. And I like a fatter gourd up here than uh, Mr. Pointy Head over here. I like the rounder one. I think it looks better. And we can always add more clay later so less is better. And I'm going to start with the eyeballs because they're the easiest for me to position and then get the rest of his face on. And I roll them both at the same time so I can see if one's bigger like that. This guy's a lot bigger so we're going to take some off of him and look at him again. That way we can even them out. Alright, so that's pretty even. So with this going back, we're going to place our eyes bit more rounded here. Okay. If they're rounded, it helps keep them in a rounded position when you squish them on. Now this guy is going to have bigger eyes because he's got a bigger head. So we're making sure he has those eyes on. Then I'm going to do his little eyebrows. And sometimes if you have something that can help you position, I'm still chasing that foam stuff around. It's easier to hold them into one place. A lot of times if it's big enough I use my lid cap of my vegetable spray. So the little eyebrows can give the character his attitude or look or happy or sad or scared just really accent the eyes well so I like to use eyebrows all right we got them on and they one can be higher than the other whatever and I'm going to use a little bit of a brush here and I'm going to texturize that this is in my clay tools if you don't have that, use a little toothpick or something like that. Probably could even use an old toothbrush if you wanted to. Alright, we're going to make his top bill now. And I kind of do it in fours. Two on two side, two on another side. And start kind of making him kind of square but flat here coming to a point. And then I position that on, leave a little bit of room up here. We can add the rest of his little features. And I give him a point down. So this is the top of his bill. Now we're going to do the bottom of his bill. This one is smaller. We're doing it in the same way. When we get to putting him on, we're going to turn him up instead of down. That guy there, it's not quite square enough. That's what's great about quick wood. You don't like it, take it off, do it again. Okay, so this guy, and a lot of times what I'll do is I get my other tools in here and I kind of hold that down and push up. That gives me more of a point. And you want them touching at the bottom, not the top. Now you could touch them at the top if you wanted to. 
It's up to you. But that's his little bill open. Okay, so let's get Biddy on his waddle, I believe is the correct term. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Now, this piece didn't have any paper on it. At least I hope so it didn't, because I didn't find any. I want to get this halfway done and find some, so. A little bit more hand spray, vegetable spray here. Okay, I'm going to do the two little pieces over the top of his beak first. And kind of a little oval shape pulled into a fine roll point just like that. And we're going to lay it down on top of his beak. And I like that position. It's kind of back and forth. You don't want them just hanging straight. So we've got that guy done. And let's do the other one. We want one longer and one shorter. doesn't matter which. And this one is shorter. It's got that little point. I'm just going to meet him on top of the beak. And just stick him on. Now we're going to come and put this bottom part on. And I kind of do it the shape of a flat teardrop. Well, not so much quite a point. The top will kind of squish that down a little bit. And we're going to flatten it out. Now while I've still got it in my hand, I'm going to put some texture into it. And I'm going to do that with just my tools. And I just come in here and, and make sure you go on the sides. I'll make sure you get all the sides. And here and there, don't make them even. Just to give it that texture. Now we're going to come up underneath the beak, and we're going to set that right there. Now this guy doesn't have a lot of room to hang him off really well. I usually like to kind of hang him off and not stick him straight on the gourd and let him dry that way so that they have some room right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let this dry. And then we're going to finish letting our pumpkin dry, and we're going to come back. If you get these knocked out when you're working with your fingers, just put it back in. We're going to come back and we're going to put our tail feathers together on our pumpkin. Okay, let's get started on the body of our turkey, which is our pumpkin that we pre-cut. Now, I've kind of done this one ahead of time, so we don't have to sit here and wait for me to do the whole thing. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wax liner, which is newer in our tool line. And the most important thing is to let him really warm up well, unlike our... Uh, wax design tools where we only let them warm up about 15 seconds. Make sure you warm this guy at least 45 to a minute. So we're going to take him and I'm going to keep my paper towel handy. That way I can wipe and then we're going to line right down the middle of the pumpkin, the fat part of those little pumpkin parts where it kind of has the hump. Now on this guy over here, I just kept going and just whisked those out, nothing at all, just really brought those out. And I did those all the way up just like a feather and then I came back in and I put a couple of here, a yellow here and there. But on this one I've decided to do, to give you a couple of different options. And if this gets clogged while you're working with it or not working with it, warm it real well and then put your Q-tip in it and that usually just cleans that right out. We're going to use our, our zero tool, the small, excuse me, the larger end, and we're just going to put feather strokes kind of on this instead of doing it with the wax liner. So let's see if we've got our tool warm enough. 
pulling away like you would a feather. So the base is down. And put these on nice and slow. The slower you go, the longer they are. And you'll have to warm up quite a bit of wax in between. Don't worry about it. Just when you start to run low, refill. There's quite a bit of wax on it here. You could even do the combination of the two. Do this with some of the liner uh, in between these to make it look even more feathery. You could do that. And I took these and uh, where the pumpkin is glued together, if you have one that's not glued together, make a halfway part where the front meets the back. And we're going to get these on here. If you've never worked with the wax, go over to my YouTubes and check out the basics of wax design. It'll tell you how to do it. I would even go slower than what I'm doing. Get those on a little bit nicer and pull them out a little bit further when you go a little bit slower. Okay, so we've got all of that on, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with my awl, and we're going to poke holes for our feathers. And I'm going to use some different feathers. On him I found some turkey feathers, but you can use even craft feathers of a certain kind if you wanted an orange or yellow or whatever. Don't feel that you can't use a different type of feather. And I'm going to kind of see how many I need. I'm going to start at all the points. So I'm going to use one, a small one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So lay them out, kind of going from bigger to smaller. And don't worry about cutting them so much because you can continue to push them in. Get some here. Two, three, five. That's good enough. We'll start with our bigger one in the middle. So I'm going to take that where that first one meets right there. I'm going to push a hole for him. Now dip into tacky glue to glue that in, not hot glue, and then push that in. And like I said, you can push it in as far as you want it to go. So then I'm going to do this one here. I'm making these holes just a little bit bigger. Now this one has a little bit more of a curvature that way, so I'm probably going to put them on that other side. Let's see, I want that one smaller. I know you guys are seeing the back side. It's the harder thing when shooting them. I probably should flip it around here so you can see it that direction. too much of a curve yet. We'll leave that more for the side. Now these are stronger than my other ones were and I had to really be careful when I was putting the feathers in that I did not bend them. So I would really put my finger up here near the front and hold it in. But see that nice uniform shape? And I want a smaller one here right about there. So that's kind of tapering off a little bit. And I am going to finish this up. I'm going to add two rows. On this guy we had three, but I'm going to finish this up and then we'll come back and we'll put them all together for you. Okay, I've got all the feathers on, and when I put two rows on, it just doesn't look full enough. It really needs three rows, and you can see I have the one, two, and three that it comes back. Now on this one, I did the stroke up until you hit the feathers and left that back part showing. 
where Mr. Tom Turkey over here, I took my all and poked holes and put the feathers in here and here. And I'd probably even do one more there to give it a full lick if you didn't want to do it with the wax. So any of those options are good. Now, we're going to talk about his face because we're not going to spend a lot of time. It would take too much of the video to sit here and watch me paint it. I use um, the Empire Gold or kind of a straw yellow on his beak. And then I used a little bit of red just inside to give it the mouth look. And I used the red on his wattle here. And on his eyes, the first thing I did was I complete painted them completely white and then I painted a smaller circle blue and then I came in and did a dot of black and then put your white highlight in your eye. It's real important to put your highlight. It really makes them look like an eye. And then the eyebrows I came in and I painted black. I did a little bit of yellow highlight just a tad on the eyes and just a tad of white on the red to give him his look. And then I would push him in and I would do something different than how I actually did it in the video. I would get this guy set in and then I would go and I would spray varnish him before you put the feathers in. So I'm going to be real careful getting this guy in now. I don't want to break. Almost sounds like a turkey, doesn't it? Don't want to break him anymore. And I remember this guy was kind of broken. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna if you if you had a longer neck, I put the neck in and then I hot glued around the edges. But this one I'm gonna have to do a little bit different. I'm gonna have to put the hot glue down first. And then I'm going to set him in and get him at the position I would want him. And then, like I said, come back and varnish him. Now, any of this white that is shows, come in and color that with your dark brown. And just paint that over. Now, I did knock this piece off because I was messing with it pretty hard, so I'm just going to glue that back on with my E6000. Like we said, there's nothing wrong with gluing that with your E6000 if you have a piece that you knock off. So, we're going to put him on our base now because he's so light, he would fall over if we didn't. And we're just going to hot glue this on to our wood base. Put that all nice and hot. I should have positioned this before I had that already there. And I still want that head just a little bit more right there. And I'll glue him into a little bit more shape because you want that face kind of showing up there. You don't want him leaning down where you can't see all his fun characteristics. And then I did think it was really cute to add just a little fall pick to that. I think that really kind of adds to that. And my base is just a slice of wood. Uh, you probably know somebody that has some, or if you can't, they do have it at the craft stores or even Walmart, a little slice of wood. Or you could use a rock or anything like that that you just use as a heavier base to set it there. But that is simply how we create our Tom Turkey for Thanksgiving. And he is big enough that he is a nice table centerpiece. So he's a lot of fun and you should have him around for years to come. So if you have any questions about this project we did today, please email me at art at mariamjoy.com. For any of the products we may have used today, please visit my website at mariamjoy.com. There's a YouTube link where you can jump over there and find a lot more of these fun videos that we're doing for you. Or if you have any questions about the process, there's probably a video that will answer that. And there's also a face, uh, Facebook a link on my site that will take you over to Facebook and you don't have to be a member just jump on over there we post something new every day we have a lot of contests going on and we just want to encourage you so thank you for joining me today have a wonderful Thanksgiving yeah.